Hey Vault Hunters, Stead Doogie coming at you with another video. Originally this video was going to be a twofer. Um, because the catalyst for the video comes from the forums. Uh, where there's this, um, let's call it uh, trend. Or, um, I don't want to say misconception. Because everyone's experience is going to be different. So essentially, there was a concern that in Mayhem 4... Zane is struggling to deal with COV enemies. And in case you're unaware, COV tend to be the strongest enemies in the game um, because of, one, the number of badasses that they have uh, in their enemy pool, and specifically the triple bar enemies. So they have shield, they have armor, and then they have uh, regular flesh health. So that's one issue. And the other issue, of course, are the anointed enemies. So all the anointed enemies are COV. And I think those two things combined with the increased health, armor, and shields of Mayhem 4 have uh, led some people to conclude that maybe COV is overtuned um, compared to the other classes. I'm of the opinion I disagree with that. I think they're just fine. I think you need to have a hard enemy. I don't think everything needs to be uh, as easy as a Skag or a, a Malawan enemy. You know, you can have your, your low-level enemies like your Skags and your animals and creatures. You can have your mid-level enemies like your Malawan and your Malawan badasses. And then you can have your really hard enemies like COV. Um, you know, especially since the the harder tier versions of COV are kind of contained in a box, so you could do Slaughter Shaft if you want that level of challenge, or you could do um, Sister in a Slaughter, or you can do Slaughter Star. So you've got you know uh, easy, medium, and hard in terms of enemies. I don't I don't want them to make it even across the board because that'll just be boring. I don't want more Borderlands 2. I personally like Borderlands 3 and some of the choices and pretty much all the choices that Gearbox has made. I really like it. Their execution sucks because they break more things than they fix but their intent and their design I think it's it's pretty well rounded and uh, my belief is that eventually all of the bugs and all of the missteps will get ironed out in time and I kind of bring that up now because on the today is December 5th and on today uh, a patch just a, a hotfix just came out and you know whenever hotfixes and patches come out you get all the rage on the forums about what didn't get fixed and how inconsequential the things that they did fix are blah 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 um, so my two cents on that is that I'm cool with the general direction though I may not be satisfied with the specific things that they break um, as they try to get things to where they ultimately want it but at the end of the day I think they're heading in a, in a good direction and you know the people on the forums at least the ones that try to be constructive are uh, um, a good source I think of information to help them uh, get this game to a, a pretty good place. Um, so that thread on the forums about the challenge that Zane faces with COV, I kind of took it on as a challenge to say, okay, I'm going to take Zane into the COV content and, uh, you know, see if at least my playing experience um, reflects what's being uh, discussed on the forums. But that's probably going to be a really, really long video, so I've decided to break it up and make it a series. And in this first video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in depth in the kind of the kind of final form of my uh, high noon Maggie bill. And I say kind of; it's kind of quasi final form because there's some there's a potential different variant that is not calm cool collected based that is I want to be able to take advantage of the uh, the new mayhem 4 
anointments that come on um, shields and grenades it gives you elemental damage which means it has to be an action skill cooldown type of build but right now guardian rank is broken and the reason why that is important is because the uh, this particular perk where is it the cooldown one is this it top top yeah action skill cooldown rate increases while your shields are full so that doesn't seem to be working at the moment because it broke in the last patch the November patch um, hopefully it will be fixed in the December 19th patch but when that comes out then I'm going to change the the build just a little bit just by one skill point All right so instead of spending a point here on uh, uh, calm cool collected and uh, maybe I'll go down and distribute it now I'm not sure yet I'll, I'll figure that out but the point is it won't be a calm cool collected build it's going to be um, an action skill and base build which means that I don't have to change my guns to uh, use action skill uh, and type of guns and action skill and grenades and so that's going to make it different even though the the skill points distribution is mostly going to be the same so that's a variant I'm going to be exploring once um, Guardian ranks has been fixed but right now we're going to be digging into uh, this current version this final form of this current version that is calm cool and collected base and the reason why I'm going to dig into it is because sometimes there's a disconnect between uh, when you see someone do something in a video and then you try to replicate it yourself if you don't have insight into the why not just the what they've done because it's easy to see what they've done because you can see the skill points being spent and you can see the gear that they have but the why they've made those decisions and how it plays out in the actual gameplay uh, sometimes there's a disconnect there and people are not able to be successful when they try to replicate something they see in a video which is why the commentary that I do in my videos is more it's less about entertainment and more about explaining why I'm doing and what, what I'm doing um, so that you can make those same kinds of judgment calls in your own gameplay and hopefully uh, be successful if you try to um, replicate or use what I'm putting out there as a baseline for your own thing. Alright so enough of that let's just kinda get into it here we're gonna start um, in this tree we're gonna start on the double agent tree because it's the one with the least amount of skill points okay so the difference between the video that I put out um, I think it was last week with this build and where we are now in this particular tree is that there's no longer five points in Donnie Book and we now have two points in borrowed time and the reason that is is because uh, we're putting two points in borrowed time so that we have more action skill duration and that's important particularly in Mayhem 4 and particularly with COV because of the triple bar enemies so as I develop this build and I'm playing and I'm tuning it one of the things I discovered is that uh, when you prop brain freeze and you free something if you don't kill that thing before they thaw and you try to freeze them again you cannot immediately freeze them with brain freeze there seems to be some internal timer where once an enemy has been frozen and they get unfrozen at least with brain freeze because that's the prop and I'm, that's the mechanic I'm primarily using to do freezing it, it does not immediately proc again so that means that if your action skill timer is running down even though you're landing headshots you may not be able to reset it before the cooldown is complete therefore to address that issue again particularly with COV because they are the triple bar uh, enemy type we're putting some points into borrow time so we have some breathing room we have some flexibility in other words we can eat the cooldown timer and be able to reset our action skills because we have more time to do so but in order to get the two points to do that I needed to get points from elsewhere and one of the places I took points from was Donnybrook so that's the change there are only four points in Donnybrook versus five in the previous iteration of this build and now we have two points in borrowed time 
Okay, next you're going to go into the Hitman tree. Okay, so the big change in the Hitman tree versus the previous iteration of this build is that there's no longer any points in salvation. We're going to lean heavily into the fact that we have borrowed time, which allows us to freeze uh, enemies with some breathing room. So we're going to get our healing from uh, frozen enemies and therefore uh, less healing from salvation. Additionally, uh, COV are hard to kill, so it can be a challenge keeping your skill, your kill skills activated. Therefore, uh, it, we're just better off from a kind of game flow and play perspective to get our healing from frozen enemies, since that's the primary thing we're trying to do with uh, with brain freeze. So, since we're not spending five points in salvation we're instead going to spend it over here in cool hand to get reload and uh, we're going to go into my gear momentarily but if you remember from the previous video we're using um, the brainstormer which is a hyperion weapon and we're using the shred of fire which is a vladoff both of those do not have especially hyperion guns do not have fast reload speed so there's a lot of time spent just waiting for reload to happen so we're going to address that weakness by spending our points in cooled hand instead of salvation. And of course, finally we're going down to death follows close again, primarily for the kill skill duration. Now, as I say that, it just occurred to me that because today is December 5th and there has been a patch, one of the fixes in the patch is that some kill skills were not being properly buffed by death follows close. They did not specify uh, what those kill skills were so we don't know but um, so my hope is that it's something that was negatively affecting us but now we're going to be having a positive effect you know I guess I could spend the time to try to figure it out but eh, I don't care that much because we we don't have too much trouble but it, the point is that we should have even um, better performance with the patch than we did before even we, though we don't specifically know what it is that has been addressed. Okay, so like I said, this was going to be a deep dive, so I'm going to talk about why um, points aren't spent, not just why, why and where points are being spent. So Violent Momentum is a fantastic skill. Uh, in the previous patch, in the November patch, they fixed it so that it scales properly with movement speed. This is an amazing skill. If you want to see it um, kind of at its absolute best, uh, Thick Fella, I'll, I'll link his videos in the description so you can go check it out. Thick Fella did a couple videos that that are built around violent momentum and he and it's done with a great effect. It, it works really, really well now. But we are using a Maggie and a Hellwalker as our primary damage dealers and a Hellwalker is a shotgun. Uh, we're not going to be sliding around. We're going to plant ourselves. We're going to get that nice tight headshot. Therefore, we don't get any real benefit from violent momentum. So we're actually better off with reload speed and uh, with swap speed than we would be with the damage increase. So the, again, we're not benefiting so much from movement speed, even though I, I personally love movement speed. I like moving faster. It just feels good. It feels good as you transfer from one zone to the next, from one enemy to the next, being able to close that gap feels really, really good. But it's less of an issue in this build because of this. Again, so borrow time where we have more time to engage enemies and reset our kill skills. So the necessity for violent speed has been reduced. Okay, cold bore, uh, primarily because we are weapon swapping and that's really what we want. We want the weapon swap speed. But we do have a Hellwalker in our build, and our Hellwalker is our cleanup weapon. And so getting that additional bonus cryo damage uh, reinforces the Hellwalker's role as our cleanup weapon. We do not get as much benefit from it, from the bonus cryo damage for all our other weapons because of their general low base damage, with exception, of course, for the Maggie. But um, it's split across pellets, so it's it's distributed across each pellet. So it's really just kind of think about it like icing on the cake the primary function is swap speed but we're just getting this bonus cryo damage um, as icing on the cake um, we're not 
we don't care about violence, violent violence, because the Maggie is a Jacob's weapon and it fires fast enough. If you spam your left kick really hard, you'll do pretty good uh, fire rate. With the shotgun, it's a one-shot shotgun, no big deal there, so we're not going to be yielding a lot from fire rate. Um, playing dirty is a fantastic skill, but it really shines with single uh, pellet weapons. It does not do as well with multi-pellet weapons because essentially with a multi-pellet weapon the extra shot simply counts as an extra pellet so if we look at except for example the Maggie it's 526 times 6 so uh, when playing dirty prox it's you can think about it like 526 times 7 which is not a huge increase right but if this was a single pellet weapon then it would be kind of the go-to choice for DPS but since we're dealing with multi pellet weapons, both in terms of the Maggie and the Hellwalker, we don't get as much from playing dirty, so we don't make any real attempt to go any further down this tree. Uh, good Misfortune, we really don't need it because this is a calm, cool, collected build where we should be resetting our action skills regularly. So uh, having a kill skill that extends duration doesn't buy us anything at all, especially because we already have borrowed time. And seeing red, not my favorite skill. I really wish it wasn't a capstone skill. I think my personal opinion is that the hitman needs a quote unquote real capstone skill. I don't see seeing red as being a true capstone skill. It has its utility, don't get me wrong. Especially if you're doing boss farming, being able to proc um, for example, playing dirty and being able to proc violent violence um, is really useful, or you know, any of, or, or violent speed if you're trying to do one of those uh, zippity zuda zane kills, uh, which you'll see happen. For example, in the thick fella video, I'm gonna put in the description. But for mobbing, there are plenty of enemies to proc our kill skills from, which is why I don't think this is a great kill skill because it's it's a great capstone because you naturally get kill skills anyway so why is it a capstone but anyway that's neither here nor there um, as far as the augments for the drone goes uh, anyone is fine I, I generally prefer bad dose because I said I like movement speed so having my drone give me movement speed um, is good stuff uh, depending on the engagement I might switch to static field to strip shields but a lot of time I'll use Winter's Drone just because it slows enemies, which makes it easier to shoot them. And it also makes it easier to proc um, Brain Freeze. Because if an enemy is already partially frozen, then um, it's just going to help Brain Freeze out. So that's it for the uh, Drone Tree. I mean, okay, I didn't touch on Drone Delivery, but it's our only source of grenade, so that's kind of a no-brainer. Okay, uh, that's it for that one. Now we're going to go back here. No, we did that one already. All right, uh, next up is undercover. So in the undercover tree, um, we're going to go with adrenaline. And we skipped this for the same reason I said in the previous video. We are using the big boom blaster uh, as our one of the central components of this build. And the big boom blaster drops um, boosts that recharges your shield. So we don't need ready for action for recharge rate or recharge delay because if you pick up two of the boosts that the boot big boom blaster drops, you go from zero shield to full shield. Simple as that. Uh, we're not too worried about capacity because we're gonna be having our barrier up most of the time or all the time if we're flawless in our execution. So we don't need capacity. So the only thing we really have to spend points on is adrenaline, which is kind of a waste if we do everything perfectly um, and, and are able to keep our, our kills or action skills going. But on the off chance, and it will happen, that our action skills go down, the benefits of action skill cooldown is going to be uh, instrumental. Next up, we have Brain Freeze, which is the uh, one of the central components of this build. This is what allows us to freeze enemies um, without actually have to use a cryo weapon so we can freeze them with any weapons as long as we can land those headshots. Stiff off the lip because we have to get down the tree. Um, in Mayhem 4, uh, 
and especially when you're dealing with COVs with all those badass enemies, damage reduction without the health pool to back it up isn't fantastic. So like I said, this is a deep dive, right? So I've kind of glossed over this stuff. So now we're going to get nerdy with it. So 16% damage reduction when you have anointed and you have badass rocket launcher spam is not going to save your life. It's just, it's kind of crappy. In order for damage reduction to really make a difference in this game, you need to have a huge health pool. And Zane only has like 6,000 and change health once he gets to level 50, unless you have on some class mods or you have on some artifacts that boost your health. But we need to get down the tree and some damage reduction is better than none. Right? It's, it's not going to save your life, but well, huh? maybe it will, maybe it won't. It's not consistent enough, but it's better to have it than not to have it, right? But it's this the three points here, its primary function is not about the damage reduction. Its primary function is about moving us down the tree. Next up, we have Rise to the Occasion, and this is just always on passive health regen. And as I've said in previous videos, this is about dealing with damage over time effects being on us. So this can help uh, to heal us um, in conjunction with this skill, which reduces damage over time effects by 50%. We can stay ahead of pretty much most dots unless we're really, really low in health. And I've seen this thing where, where I'm really, really low in health, but it these two together prevent a dot from killing me. Uh, next up is confident competence and confident competence. I incorrectly quoted as being um, a 25% in 25% previously in uh, base gun damage to 35% with the November patch, but that wasn't correct. It was just 20%. So the November p patch delivered a 15% increase, which is really nice. Um, I think it should be more because of mayhem 4 i mean i you know I, it's too late for them to do this maybe but it would be nice for some of these these buffs to be based on the mayhem level so you know maybe in normal mode it's 20 percent because normal mode and true vault hunter mode isn't particularly challenging but once you start getting into the mayhem levels it scales up um, the benefits scale up based upon the mayhem level. That that would be a nice touch, but maybe it's too late for that. So, I personally would like a nice flat, uh, maybe 50% gun damage increase for this. But whatever, we're we're we'll take the 15% that they give us because it's a lot better than a crappy 20% uh, that we had at Mayhem 3 at launch. So. Uh, it also increases accuracy, which is going to be good for the guns that we're using, namely the Maggie and the Hellwalker. So any improvement to accuracy for low accurate multi-pellet weapons is a direct increase in damage because it means that more of those pellets will hit what you're shooting at versus being uh, spread all over the place. So, uh, so not only are we getting a, a direct uh, damage buff from the 35%, but we're getting an indirect damage buff from uh, improved accuracy. So really expensive jacket that of course cuts status effect duration by 50%, which means that whenever we're affected by status effects, the chances of them of it killing us are really, really low. Um, futility belt only because it's one point we need to get down the tree and it pairs nicely with stiff upper lip. So fertility belt is a 15% damage reduction buff, regardless of what you want to talk about, the elemental converting to non-elemental, not particularly, um, we don't particularly care about that. It's just 16 plus 15 for a 31% uh, increase uh, damage reduction increase so which is that's nice but it would be better if we had a larger health, health pool but we got to get down the tree so we got to do what we got to do next up this is a change from the previous iteration of this build in that we are now going to get the majority of our healing from refreshment because we're going to lean into our ability to prop brain freeze to freeze enemies to get our health back and when we can't do that we're going to be dependent on a rise to the occasion and on Donnybrook to uh, to help us out. 
Of course, this is a calm, cool, collected build, so we need calm, cool, collected. And we're only going to be putting one point in Nerves of Steel. This is another uh, difference from the previous iteration of this build where we had a full three points in Nerves of Steel. Now, this is not some arbitrary choice. So uh, I explained why we did Refreshment versus Salvation because we're leaning into our ability to freeze. And um, uh, we were able to salvage some of the points from um, Salvation. Huh, pun not intended. Anyway, from Salvation... Right, so we have three here, which would have left us over with two points. Um, we use one of those points here, and we're using one of the points that we didn't spend here for borrow time. So that's how we got the two points from borrow time. Okay, so one point here versus three points before. What's the difference? Let's look at the gear real quick. You'll notice. Oh, I need to put the right gun in. I am using Barrier Anointed Gun. I'm using a Barrier Anointed Maggie, and I'm using a Barrier Anointed... Oop, wrong gun again. Uh, let's get the right one in. Uh, a Barrier Anointed um, Hellwalker. So the Barrier Anointed gives us 60% accuracy uh, for these two guns. So that 60% is going to more than make up for what we would have gotten from Nerves of Steel. We still put a point in Nerves of Steel to just really make sure our spread is really nice and tight. Plus we needed it, we needed to spend a point somewhere to get down the tree. We could have put another point in the health regen, but we're better off spending it here because when our barrier is not active, but our shield is full, we'll still benefit from the accuracy improvement. So you not, now keep in mind, we have accuracy here, we have accuracy here, and we have accuracy in our barrier anointed weapon. So we have accuracy from many, many sources. Therefore, it's not as crucial to have this maxed out um, compared to the build that we had before, or the version of the build that we had before. Uh, and finally, we're going into distributed denial so that we can, uh, we can leverage the big boom blaster special effect which is to drop boosters that restore shields and increases damage by 10 percent periodically okay so that's the the gist of the build and i just want to talk about my perspective on what the calm cool collected play loop looks like and how these choices impact that so this choice here with adrenaline as i said before has to do with when we are unable to keep calm cool collected consistently up so when it goes down adrenaline is how we are able to hopefully uh, get back to activating our action skills faster than we otherwise would be able to because of the uh, 30 percent 35 percent action skills cooldown rate this choice compares with this choice so it's 35 plus 20 percent so that's 55% cooldown rate. Additionally, All Rounder gives us protection from 360 protection. And if you consider the fact that we won't always be able to keep enemies in front of us, this is kind of crucial because it means that we're not taking damage to our shields and to our health, which means our ability to reset our action skill vis-a-vis -vis Calm Cool Collected is significantly improved. All Rounder also plays into our calm cool collected play loop by keeping melee enemies away from us thus keeping our shields full keeping our health topped off which is why i'm always specking into deterrence field so i rather be able to reset consistently my action skills using calm cool collected versus getting 10 percent more damage or more health regen and uh, minuscule recharge delay or 20% uh, reload speed, which is really good, and 11% movement speed. Like, we really don't care about the movement speed as much because of the fact that we're using a shotgun, so we want to plant and shoot versus strafe and shoot. So movement speed is less important here, and we should be doing pretty well in terms of healing if we're consistently able to freeze because we'll get our health back here, and we have passive healing here in Rise to the Occasion and also in Donnybrook. So the whole point of a lot of these choices is about how we keep 
uh, our action skills um, uptime vis-a-vis -vis calm cool collected now let's go into the gear um, I touched on the Maggie and why I'm using this anointed version for the barrier anointment and the 60% increase the Maggie is good enough that competent competence and nerves of steel um, makes it really accurate and really good but with the additional barrier anointment we're getting 60% which makes it which turns it into a sniper rifle essentially plus we're getting that 30% critical damage increase which is really crucial because in all of Zane has a lot of things that buff base damage but he has zero things in his kit that buffs critical hit damage and critical hit damage where you get the most of your damage if you're playing this game um, unless you're Moe's and you can or you're Amara where you can crank up elemental damage you can crank up splash damage so you know you can care less about critical hit damage with Zane critical hit damage is really crucial to be able to take on this content especially with Mayhem 4 with the giant increase to uh, enemy stats same thing here with the speed load uh, the Hellwalker and in particular the Hellwalker um, because it has 10 pellets and we as much as possible we want all 10 pellets to land on crit spots because that's when we're going to truly maximize the effectiveness of this weapon um, for everything else it's not as important um, shred of fire we talked about brain cash infused brainstormer for stripping shields we talked about nothing new there okay now let's go into our shields now one of the changes is before I would swap out between the big boom blaster and I would swap in the transformer whenever um, my barrier went down because the transformer I mean the tra yeah, the transformer is a, a much more tanky shield than the big boom blaster plus it has its special effect is a 40% chance to absorb um, weapon guns bullets that are shot at you but I have traded that in for a protean stopgap and I've done it for two reasons reason number one the stopgap special effect which is to become immune to any damage for five seconds when the shield are broken works well with deterrent not with deterrent with um, uh, distributed denial All right so uh, we were using distributed denial initially and primarily for the big boom blaster so that we could get uh, a ton of boosters on the ground to keep our shields up and keeping our shields up means that calm cool collected won't have to recharge shields it only has to deal with health <clears throat> and once health is taken care of excuse me any thick sip of water Okay, that feels better. Yeah, so once health is taken care of, then it would reset action skill, which ties in directly to why I have refreshment. By having an enemy frozen and getting the healing from the frozen enemy versus getting it from salvation, it means that if I don't have max health, when I've engaged with that enemy, I will get to max health just by proccing brain freeze. So this is a more consistent way of keeping Calm Cool Collected working to reset our action skills versus working to recharge our shields or refill our health. So nice synergy there. Distributed Denial for the um, its effect with the Big Boom Blasters to get that shield going. But when it comes to the stopgap, and I want to give a shout out to Thickfellow for bringing this to the community's attention with his testing and his videos. It turns out that the stopgap special effect of immunity, five second immunity, applies to our barrier when distributed denial uh, is specced into. So when the barrier goes down, the game treats it like the shield has been broken, and even though we have full shields we we being Zane we're now immune for five seconds this is a far better thing than a 40 percent absorb chance right so this is why I'm using the stopgap on top of that this particular stopgap has one of the new mayhem 4 
elemental anointments. So when the action skill ends, I am uh, will now be able to do an additional 50% bonus cryo damage with our weapons for 10 seconds, which pairs nicely with the Icebreaker Victory Rush artifact that we're using that has a 16% cryo damage increase, right? So the 50% that we're getting from the stopgap will be further amplified by 16% because of this artifact. So really nice synergy. And the stop gap is, a, is just a really fantastic upgrade to the Transformer. Okay, so we still have the Big Boom Blaster, of course, but this is the, the, the shield that we're going to switch to. So the play loop goes like this. If we cannot get our reset and we see the timer counting down, we go into our menu, we swap from the Big Boom Blaster to the stop gap. This way, when the action skill for our barrier goes down, we immediately have five seconds of immunity, which is just five seconds more for us to proc um, calm, cool, collected, and get our action skill back up. And even if we fail to do that, because we're immune, we can tank some damage, we can disengage, and we can wait for our action skills to cool down or for our shields to recharge or whatever it is that we need to do. So that's the play loop with that. Um, we already talked about the executors, nothing new here. This is damn near a god roll. A uh, real god roll, though, would have been um, a full five points to uh, playing dirty. And I know I said playing dirty uh, is not uber beneficial to multi pellet weapons, but it's still free damage, right? So in the case of the Hellwalker, it's an additional 492, which isn't a ton, but it's something. Um, 501 in the case of the Maggie. Uh, whatever. So it's not a ton, but it's better than uh, fire rate, which we really don't care about, and we don't really don't care about um, missed opportunity or good misfortune. So our grenades, we covered that in the previous video. Also, uh, the generator transfusion tracker here, and again, it really doesn't matter um, what the grenade... Okay, I, I said it doesn't matter, but it kind of does, and I'll explain briefly. But the primary thing we care about is the anointment. Again, we're dealing with one of the new Mayhem 4 anointments here where a grenade is thrown. We have a 25% damage, 25 damage increase for 6 seconds, which is why this skill is important. So every 15 seconds, we get a damage boost of 25%, uh, which is really cool. I, I wish there was a way for it to be shorter, but whatever. Um, 15 seconds is not bad at all. And then, of course, we have the Piss, and it has an action skill end. So just like what we were going to do with the, um, that we can do with the, with the uh, shield, uh, whenever our action skill is going to run out, we're going to swap both of these, right? So we'll get 50% cryo in the case of the stopgap, and then we'll get 20% Actually, we won't get 20%. We're only going to get um, the 50% radiation or the 50% uh, cryo. Uh, depending on the enemy I'm facing, I'll choose cryo over radiation. Because remember, with our artifact, we do get a little bit of a buff to cryo um, versus radiation. But if we're dealing with shielded enemies, then radiation works better than cryo. So uh, we're not going to get the benefit of the grenade itself in terms of its 20% increase. Um, unless, of course, one action skill is going down before the other. For example, let's say that the uh, the drone is still up and it has, still has a good chunk of time um, left on it, but the barrier is about to go down. So we can switch to the piss, get the action skill and elemental buff, and on top of that, have the drone drop the piss on the enemy for an additional 20%. So there, there are situations where you can leverage both, but the primary thing we care about is going to be the, uh, the cryo bonus um, or the elemental bonus. I'm saying cryo here, but um, the other reason I choose radiation is because two elements of the same type do not stack. So if you have a shield that's doing cryo and then we do the grenade that's doing cryo, they will not stack. We will not get 100% bonus damage. 
will only get 50. You need to have a different elemental type for the stacking to happen. Um, I'm going to go through the rest of the gear. Um, th this I picked up and run. It should be in my vault. Anyway, um, I'm using the, the, the Daisy monocle. It doesn't really matter which monocle it is, but this is just the highest base damage one that I have. Um, so I'm using a sniper rifle, and the reason for the sniper rifle is when I reach, when I face anointed militants who are going through their fire phase before we can even get to them. Right? So once they get low health, a lot of times they'll start just spamming their fire. And so we need to be far enough away so we don't get caught in its effect. Um, but also, because we're far enough away, they won't spam it, which means we can just snipe them. So we do that, and then we pair it with, damn it, Gearbox Fixture Game. Uh, we pair it with the rerouter, so we do more sniper damage, and we do it at range, so we're pretty safe, and this is for the militants. On top of that, when we find ourselves in that situation, we switch our augment to retaliation, and we get that 10% uh, damage boost. So we're just going to stack little bits of damage so we can take out militants when they go into their ridiculous um, fire immunity loop. Okay, um, we have the Cutsman because the Cutsman is how we deal with bosses. For example, a, uh, um, a Proven Grounds boss. Um, you know, there's some of them, I'll, when I do the videos, you'll see me take out, for example, um, I think it's uh, Fervor, the one with the tanks, it's the COV one. Uh, I use this shotgun uh, here, 120% more damage to badasses. This thing just destroys him. And his head is so big, we don't have to care about accuracy. Uh, we'll get all our, pe all our pellets on his giant head, so this thing just destroys. Uh, this one is here, so we can swap out um, for when our... Uh, uh, more action skill has ended, but I, I very rarely use it. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's primarily going to be this bad boy for bosses and uh, this one for everybody else. Uh, Cutsman again, this one to fire to deal with flesh enemies. This is primarily for anointed. Specifically, this is um, for what? Uh, damn it, his name just fell out of my head. The 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 giant one that breathes three skulls at a time. I'll remember his name, I think, before I get to the end of the video. So that's for dealing with them, and also you can use it to deal with uh, the anointed militants. This is for bosses to strip their shields. If you find a boss that has a shield, like if you were running Heck, uh, Tront, I use this to take down um, General Haunt. I get his name, General Haunt. This is just to get our, uh, our ammo back. So for shotguns. Uh, so this is our cleanup gun, so we use it a lot, and we'll run low on ammo. And so one shot from this paired with um, a cut purse gets us back to full ammo really easy. Um, this was our go-to gun when the, um, the Halloween uh, uh, event was going on, because every time we got hit by a skull, We'd get debuffs with Terra, and Terra screws up your accuracy and your handling, so this was how we dealt with that. This is no longer going to be in our kit, because the event is going to have to deal with skulls. Uh, this one is for dealing with uh, the anointed that has that um, the blue shield, the blue shield anointed enemy. So this helps the stripper's shield. If I find myself fighting him alone, if I'm fighting him with a group of enemies, I will use the, uh, the Brainstormer and group strip shields versus trying to take one shield down at a time. But sometimes you find yourself in a situation because he's teleported away from a group of enemies and you want to get his shield down quickly. This is there for that purpose for, or for any enemy where you just you need to single target focus, uh, single target, fo target focus and uh, strip a shield. Uh, Cold Warrior plus five into synchronicity. I use this when I'm doing boss fighting and I'm using either 
uh, a dictator or I'm using one of the uh, cut one of the uh, the Kutzman SMGs so because they're not getting any benefit from uh, Jacobs critical damage and they're not getting any benefit from shotgun damage and it's a boss so I may not have any kill skills um, procced so this just gives us better DPS uh, dictator this is for dealing with uh, anointed and for dealing with with giant size bosses if a boss is really big the dictator does a really good job because all those bullets are hitting the boss there it's not so good for smaller size enemies because most of the bullets are missing them uh, we talked about this already we talked about that already we know what the big boom blaster is for you know what the piss is about and my comms um, we covered the important ones i just have these on me because for example once I've cleared an area and I'm going back to collect loot, being able to move quickly and zip around, I just slap this bad boy on. Um, FYI, it seems that elemental damage boost, uh, elemental projector doesn't seem to work well when this is on. Oh, not not this. When when this is on, because if it reduces all damage to non-elemental damage you don't seem to get the projector effect because I was fighting Tront a couple of days ago and I'm standing in his fire but I wasn't doing any more damage with the elemental projector on and I either it's bugged or it's futility belt that's causing it to not work so FYI I should probably put the elemental projector back but it doesn't matter okay so you know that about covers it for uh, for the gear for this build and the build itself like I said, this is the, the kind of the final form for this iteration when Guardian rank has been fixed and we can take advantage of the action skill cooldown perk. I'm going to do a, a different variation of this build based around action skill and weapons and action skill and gear and see if we can't uh, make some magic happen um, using this build as a baseline but then tweaking it for action skill end so uh, this is the end of part one of this uh, Zane versus COV series um, hopefully I've provided some useful information that you can use as a baseline for your own build and uh, yeah, I want to thank like the two of you that actually watch my videos um, for watching and I will catch you all in the next one be well.